Have you ever wondered how a plant stand and a lamp could look like together? Check this out. I think that's one of the coolest things I've made in a long time. A lamp and a plant holder that looks like it's floating in the air. Check out the video. Welcome to my workshop. In today's video, we're going to be making a quite interesting, hopefully, and unique lamp stand something <laughs> for flowers okay obviously for tiny ones depending on how big you want to go but this lovely little fella will have a nice and cushy place to grow now i do have some fantastic pieces of ash dark ash so hopefully this will be the right timber for the project and will give us really nice results first of all though i need to cut it to smaller more manageable sizes and then we need to plane the whole thing as these are rough sawn first of all with the miter saw i'm just cutting them to about 38 centimeters long now the flower itself needs to be in some sort of a stand and that's why I'm just cutting a chunk out of my I dig bow a slab and hopefully that color combination with the dark ash will be really really nice however to make it even more interesting I will be adding a top and bottom to this slab from white ash hopefully this color combination will be quite interesting now it's time for the jointer to make sure one of the faces and the sides are nice flat and true And finally with a table so we can cut these pieces to the correct width. Now let's create the block that the plant will be sitting in. So that's the piece of Idigbo and these are two pieces of white ash. More or less to the same sizes but we'll refine the final shape of this when this is glued up. So let's just glue this up. And later on when this dries we'll cut it to the final size and shape. I think this should give us a really nice and interesting look. There we go, that's better. And I'm gonna leave that to set. Right, for the next step, we need to decide how we're gonna construct our frame. You can just put the pieces against each other, use some wood glue, some screws, off you go. However, I think if we're gonna do mitres, 45 around the perimeter, these will look really, really nice, and it will give that extra fancy look to the whole thing. So let's head over to my mitre saw and cut that 45 degree angles on all the pieces on both sides of each piece. And I'm just gonna be using a stop block as well to assist me in making sure that every piece is at the same length. And if our block is now fully dried, we can cut it to the final dimensions on the mitre saw as well. Okay, let's talk about dimensions here for a second so you know exactly what we've got. 35 centimeters wide, obviously they're all the same. When it comes to thickness, my boards are three and a half centimeters thick, but obviously yours don't have to be that thick. Um, deep, that's nine centimeters, and the block of wood that's nine and a half by nine by nine. Okay, so that's what we've got here. Right, the next job is to actually create a channel uh, for the LEDs that will go on two pieces. After that, we need to figure out a place to hold uh, the controller for the LEDs. Now this one is quite cool. It does have a motion detection. However, I'm not gonna be using that. What I will be using is the option night and day. Okay, so I can set it up to night. Uh, so that will recognize it's dark and I'm going to set it up for let's say three hours, okay? The lights themselves, the LEDs, they're not grow lights, they're not plant related lights and I, you definitely don't want to have them all night long on. So that's actually quite handy. And the final thing that we're going to do, well, I do want to have the floating effect of this cube 
And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a clear acrylic piece, okay? So I'm going to route out a small uh, channel over here and in the block as well. And basically we'll glue it on or maybe just the bottom will be glued on so we can actually remove the block. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, clear acrylic piece uh, that will go between them. Hopefully <laughs> that will give us a really cool floating effect. However, first of all, let's jump into the router table and let's create the channel for the LED strip. Tell you what, this project is a little bit suck and see as you go. So um, I have actually do have a chamfer bit installed in my router table and I thought to myself, having a quite heavy chamfer in the middle would look quite good. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to run a chamfer in the inside of the frame. Okay, I have swapped the router bit now to a straight 16 millimeter router bit. That's to accommodate the LED channel I do have for my LEDs and it is 16 millimeters wide. In total, the depth of it needs to be at seven millimeters and I'm gonna do that in two passes as ash, it is quite dense and hard. With my Japanese saw and the frame itself, I'm going to be cutting the LED channel strip to the correct size under the correct angle. Right, so that's the LED profiles. Obviously, I've not glued them on yet. I just put them so we know how it looks like. Now we need to sort out the cube itself, okay, the position of it and how we're going to make it appear that it floats. Now I do have this acrylic rod. The diameter of this is one centimeter, so it should be fairly stable. It shouldn't wobble too much. So basically what I want to do is to cut it to the right size, a pre a hole in the block and in the base, and we're just gonna glue it in place. Probably CA will be just enough for this. So I'm gonna mark up middle of that, middle of the base, and we'll head over to my pillar drill. Now on the other side of that block, we need to create a hole that will accommodate our flower pot. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a hole template that I will stick onto our block and then I'm gonna use my router to remove the material from the inside. And on my router, as you can see, I do have a guide bush that will ride along the edges of our template. Now I'm trying to figure out how to mount this driver for the LED lights. As I said, this actually got motion detection, day and night detection. You can charge it via USB and obviously it's battery operated. I've got batteries inside uh, and you can obviously change it between different modes. You can establish how long the lights will be on. So what I think I'm gonna do, so that's the base, that's the back of the base. I'm gonna more or less place it let's say just maybe just over here okay and i'm gonna take material out from the bottom and basically i'm gonna bury that just slightly just like that so it's not visible from the outside as you look at this contraption from the front and i'm going to use some velcro <laughs> to attach it uh, to the piece of timber to the base so if I need to change the batteries or change the settings I can just peel it off quite easily and it does have a tape on both sides so hopefully that should be a good option and again I've used the double-sided tape trick as you can see I've created a border with some scrap pieces of MDF that my router bit that does have a bearing will be riding along it Okay, and now it's time to actually pre drill a hole in our base to allow the LED strip to get through and feed through the whole frame.
Now before we're actually going to start putting this together is the perfect time to sand everything down. So I'm going to go through grid 80 and then 120. With the final sanding will happen after we assemble everything and clean it up and then I will hit it with grid 150 and that will be enough for this project. Now I'm going to be using a bit of CA glue to put the tracks in place and that will be sufficient. You don't really need anything else than that. Okay, and now it's time to glue this up. And I'm going to leave this to cure for a couple of hours. Our frame has set absolutely lovely and now it's time for the last final touch of sanding with 150 grit. Alright and now it's time for a bit of finish before we actually install the LEDs and I'm using spray varnish satin. However, you can use any finish you wish, wax, oil, uh, anything you've got available in your workshop. For me, this is the quickest and easiest way uh, to sort this out. And as I said, I'm going to be using the Velcro with um, the driver itself for the um, LED strip. I think it's just the best way to sort this out. It gives me the access to the batteries, to the sensor and to all the options. I think it's just the best option here. So I think in my current setup, that is the best way to get this done. Now I have to establish the correct length of my LED lights. I'm just gonna cut them right over here. And the strip itself does come with a tape so I can attach it to the channels. I think this will look really really nice. And the final thing to do is to install our, well, plant stand. Now I've cut that acrylic rod to correct length and I'm just going to use a bit of CA glue to hold the acrylic rod in place. I think this will be absolutely sufficient. Just gonna grab my square to make sure it's nice and square. And I'm just gonna leave it for a few seconds to glue to set. And here it is guys. I think it came out really, really cool. Not seen many of these types of uh, plant holders, lamps or whatever you're gonna call this. And from afar, you can't really see the acrylic rod, so it seems like the flower is floating inside of the frame. Tell you what, <laughs> I'm really pleased with the results over here. Super, super cool thing. Now, I hope you enjoyed this little interesting, a bit different project. Something definitely quite unique. But, you know, it could be a very interesting thing in your house, somewhere on a display. And I, to be fair, I actually dig it. It's quite cool. 
Now I'm going to take it to my house and find a place for it. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Now I want to thank you my Patreons for the ongoing support. And if you want to join the Patreons and support my channel as well, there's some links down below in the description of this video. However, don't go just yet. I do have some really cool playlists just over here. Click on those and maybe you'll find your next video to watch. However, for today, that's it. Thank you very much. Take care.